What was Shakyamuni Buddha's goal? It was to help all beings liberate themselves from suffering, not just a simple normal relief from suffering, but relief from the ultimate suffering to achieve full happiness. That means you no longer have to suffer. It's not just for a temporary moment, but forever. Today, if you're able to understand and accept Buddhism, and if you practice Buddhism, you are not a common person, because only a person with wisdom will select this path. Why we can't fully comprehend the teaching is because we all have illness. We all have troubles. Therefore, our wisdom cannot be realized. There are very deep conditions that we have planted for many lives in the past that keep us from even hearing of the word Buddha, let alone understand it. It's not easy to practice Buddhism. It has high wisdom. But do not think everything is high wisdom. All the major sutras like the Avatamsaka Sutra or the Diamond Sutra start from the basics even though their content is profound. So today we will learn about a couple of very important lessons. Today we Buddhists, we want to learn from Shakyamuni Buddha, our teacher. So if we want to learn from our teacher, our master, what is the most important thing to learn from him? The first thing is right awakening. First, we need to have a goal. First, we need to learn how to be awakened. This is very important. Awakening means you're aware, you understand. But this awareness is not just simple awareness, because there is one condition before that. It's called right awakening. It's different. If you add this word right, the whole meaning is different. So what does right awakening mean? We must take our time to understand this. Nowadays, there are a lot of smart and talented people. Especially in this modern world, we have a lot of genius level scientists. We have talented scientists, talented engineers who devise a lot of innovations and discoveries in the tech sector and the scientific sector because we are in the era of technology. This is what defines our era. If you do not follow along in this era, you will get kicked out of the queue. You will be left behind. So that is why it is a struggle for a lot of older people because technology has been developed at a speed that is very fast, astoundingly fast. For example, even just two years ago, we never thought we would do this online. And now, can you imagine we conduct the Dharma ceremony and stuff without these technologies, without the internet, without computers? We're forced to use it, including myself. I'm forced to use it every day. So sometimes when I meet young kids, when I come across young kids, when they see me struggling with phones, they laugh at me. They say, even a kid knows how to operate a smartphone, so how can you be so clueless about it? I am always being laughed at in this regard. If you look at the Japanese news, a lot of their temples and sanghas have robots. Obviously, they dress them as a monk, and they even sculpted one robot after Buddha, and they are like service robots. They can also talk about sutras. It's kind of like a Q&A. They allow you to ask questions and answer you. So, for example, if you have any issue, you can ask this Buddhist Alexa about your issues. Ask for their guidance, and as long as you can call the number, you will be linked to the system. And that system is like a call center. 
So this is the level of development in our technological era. In the future, even the role of monks will be replaced by robots and AI. If you do not believe me, look it up. It's true. However, no matter how developed technology is, if it's not wisely used, it will always cause more harm than good, and very big trouble can be caused by technology, mostly because it is destructive. It's exploitative and destructive towards nature. Let's talk about humans. We say the husband and wife are the closest group of family, unit of family. Nowadays, if you look at couples, do you think husbands and wives are closer, or husbands and iPhones, or wives and iPhones? I saw a case where a lay Buddhist, he's a guy, and he has a family, and if his wife is not at home, maybe she has gone out shopping or somewhere else. It doesn't even matter if she's late returning home. But when he lost his phone, he threw a fit. It's like, where's my phone? So this is a not so normal thing, which I have observed. These technologists, philosophers, scientists, and religious workers are very smart, and they should be. They are leaders of their communities. They are innovators. However, even though they are very intelligent and their IQ is way above average, Buddha will not give them the title, the qualification of having right awakening. So their intelligence is not considered, not qualified as right awakening. We must understand why these people who are in the top percentile of human intelligence are not considered rightly awakened. In Buddhism, the word right, right view, right awakening, right thought, right speech, is not easy to obtain. Even if you want to actually achieve this level, it's not easily obtained by anyone. So how come their intelligence is not considered as right awakening? Very simply, it is because their heart has not been freed from afflictions. Their heart is bound by their habits and desires. They are smart, but they have not severed their afflictions. They have not purified their heart, their mind. They are still entangled with things and people. Like, you're right, I'm wrong. All of the worldly conflicts. They still have hatred, greed, ignorance, and arrogance, especially arrogance. On top of that, they have wandering thoughts, discriminations, or prejudice, and attachments to things or people. They have selfishness, and they are attached with desires of amassing profits and prestige. No matter how capable their mental faculties are, they're not rightly awakened. That's why, from this, we understand how important right awakening is. The number of people who chant Amitopo, to be honest, is a lot. But how many actually made it to the Pure Land from this earth because they haven't achieved the level of right awakening? A lot of people think that Amitabha Buddha will bestow a lot of fortunes on them. They come for that but they have not seen the awakening side of it. And the whole core of right awakening is about a pure heart. It's about your heart instead of your mind. Is your state of mind pure, clear of afflictions from clouded judgments? Is your heart pure? If your heart is pure, if your wisdom is crystal clear, that means you have pierced through things very clearly without clouded judgment. Only then is it called right awakening. Because a pure heart nurtures this kind of wisdom that is able to awaken you to the reality of everything.
This wisdom, the use of this wisdom is called right awakening. The standard of right awakening is only available in Buddhism and the teachings of Buddha. Because as long as we are in the six realms, everything we see, everything we understand is not considered right awakening because of the reasons mentioned, the afflictions. Today you chant Amitofo, the same thing happens. It all relies on a pure heart. A chant of Amitofo that comes from a pure heart is very powerful.